The lineup settling in pretty well. And the team batting average jumped up to about 272 coming into the night. And I think getting a big guy back, Dorshing, has really made a difference. Everybody else kind of like falling into place. Ingram looks at strike one to start the game. That misses low. Of course, Dorshing's first game coming back, Cowboy designated hitter was, I say, starting lineup. First game back in his starting lineup was a week ago tonight at Wichita. That's out of play. Foul. Mentioned the wind. It's blowing out to left field at a good 25 to 30 miles per hour. There's a look at David Mendham, who's a Cowboy first baseman, who is handling those duties as Dorshin continues to work his way back to a point where he's probably most comfortable being out there for an entire game. He had a foot injury, Dorshin. And Ingram strikes out, and Martin retires the first man. For Wichita State. And, and by the numbers, Dave, that's an 87 mile an hour slider. That's that's um, that's major league. I mean, that's a really good pitch. And, uh, you know, as a leadoff guy, he goes back to the dugout. I mean, hey, you better hit that fastball because that slider I just saw was unhittable. That was 94 straight downhill. Really eliminates the contact spot. That's fouled away. That slider right there got a little flat. And even though it's 88 mile an hour, it looked like a pitch that he was kind of guiding, trying to, trying to get it to a location. But this is, this is what starting is going to be for Trevor. He's going to be able to throw all three pitches and Turn them loose. You know, don't. You can make a mistake. 0 oh, 2 to Brock Rodden, the Oklahoma native, and he swings and misses. Very quickly, two out here in the Wichita State first. And again, there's a 94 up above the hands, which has become the strikeout pitch in, in baseball right now. And this ball's way up out of the strike zone. Too good to see it and take it, I guess, because. For some reason, hitters have lost that discipline on the high pitch. Now here's Xavier Casarella, base is empty, two out. Casarella has hit in every position in the Wichita State batting order, except for leadoff and ninth. Hitting third tonight, base is empty, two out. It's one ball, one strike. What's the hardest thing when you've been in Trevor Martin's situation closing and then you start for the first time? What's most difficult about that? Or is it difficult? I think just the fact that he can relax and breathe a little bit. You know, you, when you close, you don't have any room to breathe. I mean, you got to come out there. You got to be really fine. And now, you know, he's pitching it. Now, that's 96. That's the first when I would, I guess you got to call high velo 96. I mean, just, it, it amazes me it doesn't throw under 94, but you know, that was a, a little bit of an add on fastball right there. And now he's got the count one, two. He could do whatever he wants right here. Good. So he throws a slider down and away. He's allowed to do that here, Dave. I mean, when you close, sometimes you can't let anybody get on base because that's normally the tying run. So uh, maybe relax and pitch a little bit and. Get some of those little negative thoughts out of your mind because young pitchers, believe me, man, learning how to close is not easy. And the count is full. It's been an up and down year for Wichita State. Team's been battling a lot of injuries. They started the year 0 and 6, then won 7 of 8. Including a great performance at the Frisco Classic where they beat Iowa, Washington State, and Texas A&M in consecutive games. And that's a two-out walk. And like, you know, the attempt right there was to try to keep the ball down, try to keep it in the ballpark. And is that a negative thought? Um, 
I'm going to answer that. It is. You know, that that 30 mile an hour wind blowing straight on. I mean, it's howling right now. It can climb into your head. So the guys that have some power, they go over to scout and report. casarella has got power. So what he did right there, he didn't give him anything that he could pull out of the yard. First pitch misses to Sawyer Thornhill. And early in a ball game right here, it's it's a guy where if you walk a guy, the next guy's going to have some juice. Tonight, it doesn't take a whole lot of juice to hit it out of here. So you don't want to throw a two run dinger. You'd like to try to avoid walks. With the wind blowing out to left at 25 to 30 miles per hour, worth mentioning again. Now, Wichita State, in case you're wondering about the potential for a two out steal. Shockers have only stolen 23 bases in 34 attempts. They're the opposite as to what we saw in here over the weekend. An Oklahoma team that had more than 60 on the year entering that series. And it's fouled away one and one. And again, that fits Trevor Martin. Trevor's kind of deliberate to the plate. He's not a not a quick worker and he's not quick to the plate. You know, you can steal on Trevor Martin, but this isn't part of their game. Now, we just had Oklahoma in. Over the weekend, their game was to run, you know, and they did put pressure on the pitcher. So right now he could still load up with a runner on first and two out and bring the big stuff to the plate. And it's one and two. It's Wichita State team that, as I mentioned at times, Played well, had some good wins. Been a struggle a bit offensively as of late. They've scored more than five runs only once in the last 11 games. A lot of that, though, created by some injuries to some of their key players. Runner goes at first, and it's fouled away. Count remains one and two. Well, as crazy as our weather has been in Oklahoma, I watched a game two weeks ago in Wichita and Kansas uh, I think they yeah they lost their closer that night and it was 20 it was 38 degrees wind chill was 29 and you do play some games up in, in Wichita that's really really cold and you ask every guy that puts a uniform on what conditions they do not want to play in and it's cold weather and this is a this is a warm weather sport Casarilla there after a two out walk. You know, two of the key players returning for Wichita State this year have been very limited. Jack Segrist had almost 100 career starts entering this entering the season. He's been bothered by a labor injury that's really limited him, forced him to move from second to first. Jack Garrett Kosas has also been bothered by injury. Throw down to second, not in time, and Casarelli in there with his third steal of the year, and he's there with two out. But yeah, he didn't have a chance right there. Casarelli got a big jump, and like I said, Trevor's awfully uh, deliberate. I don't want to say slow, but he, that, that's a big body that likes to get a big arm involved, and sometimes, you know, he'll come off like uh, he's ignoring a runner. But as I mentioned, Segrist has been bothered by the labor injury. Kosas. We had 12 home runs and drove in 45 a year ago. First team all American. It's been bothered by a hamstring injury and missed about a month. And so those are two players that had high credentials from last year. Segrist hit 321, stole 15 bases. As I mentioned, Kosas, 12 home runs, 45 RBIs. In fact, you know, last year, Tom, before Kosas suffered an injury 25 games in, he'd already hit 10 homers and driven in 37, hitting 330. Those are two guys put up big numbers that have been very limited this season. That's why maybe you are struggling a bit offensively lately, right? Yeah, and and again, you have a guy hitting in the three holes, hitting, you know, 195. It kind of tells you they had a plan, and now they're forced to, to redo, you know, reshuffle. Little 89-mile-an-hour fastball right there out of the rookie.
There you see Reggio at first after being hit by pitch to start the Cowboy first. It's in there, one and one to Earhart. Almost literally. Players had RBIs, nine different players had multiple hit games in winning the two out of three against Oklahoma here at the ballpark as it's one and two on Earhart. Well, and, and again, you know, the Oklahoma State thing is play one run baseball. And first two games, uh, right down to the last pitch of both nights, uh, big time games. And Sunday, even though there was a pretty good gap, you just didn't feel like it was over until real late. I think he hit another guy. He did. He's got that sweeping slurve. He has good arm, good arm speed on it. That ball just ran right into his back foot, which. You technically te teach young pitchers to throw that slider to the back foot, but you'd like to be able to get a catcher's man on it before it gets to the foot. So Miner has hit the first two batters for Oklahoma State here in the first. Now Jake Thompson sits, steps in. First and second, nobody out. Pretty First. good, pretty good deception, Dave. I mean, he closes that front shoulder up, makes that 88, 89. Look like it has a little bit extra jump on it. Thompson, the Cowboys' leading hitter among players with more than nine starts, and it's 0 and 2. And there's a 90. Not backing down. Tell you what, Wichita State's got a pretty darn good pitching coach, and for young pitchers to be able to to work under a major leaguer, uh, boy, every time they open their mouth, they're giving them something special. And you know, every time you talk to him, Dave, the, the one thing that, that's universal is teach them how to throw strikes. Mike Pelfrey, the former big leaguer, the pitching coach of Wichita yeah. State. Great career. Now Pelfrey had 12 years in the big leagues, seven with the Mets. Most fans would remember him. Also three with the Twins, Tigers for a year, White Sox for a year. Of course, he pitched at Wichita State as well, 2003 to 2005 in the Wichita State Hall of Fame. One and two to Thompson. That's grounded to third, and it ricochets off the third baseman. Casarella throw to first is in time, but the runners move up to second and third with one out. And that ball was hammered. If he picks it clean, it's probably an easy double play ball, but. Ball just jumped on him, and again, you know, we're we're shadows all over the place. You know, this this evening thing here, and we got guys in the sunshine, and on the right side, and left side's all shadow, and finding balls off the bat, Dave, when the shadows are this dark, sometimes you got to really, really bear down and give it an extra look, because we we never had shadows like this at the at the old park. Second and third, one out, and here's Dorsey. It's 0 and 2 to him. He has a four game hitting streak. He's hit safely in all four games since he returned to the lineup after being out roughly a month with a foot injury. It's kind of picked up from where he left off early in the season. Six of 18 since his return at the plate. 0 2 pitch. And that's grounded up the middle. That will score a run. Rod throws the first, a low throw, but dug out by Rogers. Over to third goes Earhart. And scoring is Reggio, and it's 1 0 Oklahoma State. RBI ground out for Griffin Dorsey. Tell you what, he got the fastball away from him. Maybe another ball, and he strikes him out. 
That's that long arm, long reach. Put it in play. That's a 22-year-old here. He knows, he puts it in play, we score. Strike out, you get nothing. So Earhart at third down, here's David Mendham, who's been on a good tear himself. He's hit safely 14 of his last 16, hit 349 during that run. He's actually hit left-handers pretty well. He has. It's one and one. In fact, Mendham against lefties this year. It's eight out of 25, that's 320. That's pretty good. Tell you what, Miner stepped it up a little bit. You know, he's he's at 90 now on every pitch. Good run, good arm slot. It's one and two. Well, Miner was off. he was good against the Cowboys last week in Wichita. Threw five innings, gave up only one run on seven hits, struck out four, walked one. Kind of well, a tough break for him. He didn't get a win out of it. Well, that and then the pitch against the same team in, in six days. Yeah. Tougher on the pitcher, I think. I mean, the hitter should have. That into left center, and that's a base hit. Earhart scores easily from third. Menden working his way into second. He's here with a double. It's an RBI double for Menden. It's 2 0 Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State didn't even have baseball, and he went up there and started the program. And he'd been at OU, and OU was really good when we came back. When we came in here in 77, they'd been to the, to the World Series three years in a row, and Coach Stevenson was on that staff. So we automatically started building programs at the same time. And he got Joe Carter a first year, which really made a difference for Wichita State baseball. And Joe was a two sport guy out of Oklahoma City, which we didn't we we weren't even involved with him. And uh, boy, from that day on, when we played Wichita State, it was a bloodbath and. Gage Williams leading off grounds that to second Reggio. Stopped it with a behind the back glove hand, but couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, Infield you're single. Not, you're not throwing him out no nope, matter what. No you chance. Do. But Coach Stevenson was uh, one of those guys, you know, he could talk to you, and when you put your uniform on, it was nothing but a battle. And I think we, I don't think we ever got to know each other because it was that competitive. And, uh, he wanted what we wanted. He wanted Wichita State and Omaha, and so did we. Now it's Peyton Tolley up for Wichita State. Gage Williams at first. Gene Stevenson, in case you're wondering, now 76 years old. Of course, he was born in Council Grove, Kansas, but he grew up in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Yep. Went to Missouri initially, I'm told, on a football scholarship, and then... Moved over to baseball where he played for Missouri's legendary coach, High Simmons. He was a first baseman, an All American, 1967, if I remember right. You know, it's great to see him. He looks good. Yeah, he could teach hitting too. His really? kids could hit. Oh, yeah. They, they, were, they were really good, well coached ball clubs. That's fouled away. Had his keen sense of humor. He was, he was letting it fly as soon as he stepped in the booth, my friend. Giving you a hard time. Yeah, only only now <laughs> do you get a chance to see that humor. I mean, when we schedule games, it was like, are you kidding me? You make sure there's nobody in the building listening. Because trying to get it, he wanted it when he wanted to play, and we always wanted it when we knew. On Tuesday, and it was, uh, it was very, very, very uncomfortable. Shaking hands when the ball game was over. Well, big rivals, but give credit where credit's due. I believe seven college World Series for Coach Stevenson at Wichita State, 26 regional appearances. Wow, he had seven up there. Yeah, how about that? I think put add that with his OU trips when he was at OU. So he's probably, what, 10 or 11 trips to the College World Series in his career. And then, you know, in certain circles, 
He could probably shave his beard off and coach right now. <laughs> <laughs> the beard looks good on him, though. Yeah, but see, that makes that makes you look older. So then they just say, "Now nah, he's too old to cook." Runner goes at first, and there's no throw. Hey, Second stolen doing, base Dave, of the night for Wichita State. They're they're on Trevor on a, on a stopwatch. They got his his time to the plate, and uh, I'll put it this way: I don't think Trevor Martin will ever die of a heart attack. <laughs> he is about as laid back. As it gets, I mean, he's. The count is full to Tolan. So Wichita State, by the way, has already stolen two bases, as I mentioned. They came into the game, a team that really hadn't stolen many bases, really not part of their repertoire. But as you said, had them on a stopwatch tonight. They'd only stolen 23 bases coming in. Yeah, he's probably somewhere around 155 to the plate. That's a foul tip and a strikeout of Tolan. One away here in the second. I see that right in between the slider and the cutter. And, you know, I know he came to school with a cutter. That ball had good depth to it. I'm going to call that one a slider. I know last summer we, we toyed with throwing a split to try to give him that third pitch, that off-speed pitch. And by the end of the summer, he... Kind of liked it. And he, you know, put it on the shelf and somebody calls you a closer. You really don't need to fool around with the third and fourth pitch very often, especially when, when you can run it up to 97, 98 mile an hour. So maybe Trevor's going to have to come back and, and add that third pitch. And one or no to Jordan Rogers, runner at second, one out in the second. Sounded really good off the bat, but he got it off the tip of the bat. And again, that ball had great late explosion away. You know, you think you nailed it, and then it doesn't go anywhere. And tonight, when you hit it in the air, and it goes to short center field, you didn't get it very, very much, because the wind is worth at least 30 feet tonight. So two out for Sestro. And the wind out of the south now it almost seems like it's out of the southeast. It might be blowing a little bit more toward the corner in left field as opposed to straight away to left. Maybe a bit of a change. It's probably being a bit over analytical when it comes to the wind, but it looks like it might be going a bit more toward the corner now. Well, you almost have to check it, especially when the, the flag is bigger than anything in the stadium. That might be the biggest flag in the country. That's grounded sharply foul first base side. Of course, your son Matt, seven time Major League All Star, told us after the game Sunday regarding the wind that he checked it all the time as a hitter. Always knew what the wind was doing. Always knew. Yeah, and you wouldn't know that. I mean, that came from his heart, you know, and you can see right there that flag is pretty stiff. And of course, if you spend any time in Oklahoma, you. You realize when spring comes along, it's more about more about the wind than it is the showers. Oh, there's no doubt. That pitch gets away from Doherty and heads over toward the Wichita State dugout. And over to third goes Williams, and he's there with two out. Well, here's the deal: if you're a golfer. And you say, well, I'm going to wait to play golf on a day when the wind's not blowing so hard. You should probably just take up bowling because you'll never play. I agree. That's just the way it is. I agree. Now the fall around here is not. Now quite that's as a different windy. story. It is. Yeah, that's the prime golfing weather for sure. Wind doesn't blow as hard. It's lifted into center. Another chance for Earhart. Over toward left center. He makes a grab, and that ends the Wichita State second. Once again, the Shockers strand one. Headed to the bottom of the second. It's 2-0 Oklahoma State on ESPN+. Plus. Two-nothing Oklahoma State as we move to the bottom of the second. 
So far tonight, the Cowboy leadoff men, one for one, and in Bedlam, boy, big numbers. Oklahoma State's been good in this category all season, Tom, better than 400 on the year, but exceptional against Oklahoma, winning two of three in the series. And, and I think, again, um, those are the little things that are indicative of you having a good ball club. I mean, winning, that, that speaks for itself. But when you're, when you're starting to do things where analytically you look at him and you go, boy, don't walk the leadoff guy. You know, they score every time. Or don't, don't let the leadoff guy get on. They're going to score every time. Before you know it, that stuff gets in a scouting report. And when they go over it with the, the ball club in the, in the team meetings, it plants a negative seed. By the way, a new pitcher for Wichita State, Robert Kranz, is in. So it's just a one inning night for the Wichita State starter. Jace Miner gave up two runs, hit the first two men, allowed only one hit. Yeah, in seven innings, this guy hadn't been on the mound very often, but there's a 93 mile an hour fastball right there. So a little bit of juice, get him out there, let him grow up. Kranz last worked on. That's a 94, and you can tell this is this is a guy of the future right here. Marcus Brown with a one-two count on him, leading off the second. That's just short. Stewart makes a play, and there's one away. 79 mile an hour breaking ball. Looked like it had a little bit of curveball to it. You know, Dave, midweek baseball, it, it, it's, um, it's kind of got a different personality. The rivalry jacks it up, okay? And you can't do anything about that. That's the way it is. But everybody now realizes you're you gotta you gotta make a good show in your conference. You've got no chance to go anywhere. So when Tuesday rolls around, I mean you're normally trying to patch a hole or take a look at somebody and I think it's all over the country. I mean, the, the the SEC, take a look at who they're playing tonight. I mean, some of those opponents are, like, not worthy of being SEC, but those guys in the SEC aren't going on the road on Tuesday night. They're not going to do that. They're, you're going to come to their house. So the chances of, of, you know, damaging your RPI are slim and none. But when you play the Wichita State's um, – the Oral Roberts, the guys, they're best in your area. You can't just treat it like it's a, an exhibition game and run five or six freshmen out there that haven't pitched. And, you know, right now, Wichita State's um, trying to get a little roll going. So tonight, you might see five or six guys with five or six innings on the year. Count now full to Aiden Miola. And at no time are they conceding the game, but they got to save their arms for the weekend. So... Midweek baseball, when you get about halfway through, it's really tough to play. That's to Stewart. There's two away. Shortstop's got a good arm. You know, and I would think it would be hard, especially for young players. I mean, baseball is a game of rhythm. Oh, you got to play. And then you, then you get into a Tuesday situation where you may have seven or eight different pitchers working. Obviously, you're not using one of your elite starters in Major League Baseball. You just roll the guys over and keep going. And so the game has an entirely different feel to it. The games at midweek obviously can be longer. Does that take some time for young players to adapt to that and sort of be able to transition back and forth, or does it really matter? Yeah, no, you have no idea who you're going to face. I mean, it's not like that third of the same pitcher. You know what? Where the game has changed, you don't even get that third opportunity in the big leagues. I mean, yeah. No, oh no. You better be really good, and you better be Max Scherzer. You better be one of those people that when he says, uh, I'm done, is when you go get him. You don't go get Adam Wainwright if he's throwing a shutout just because it's your third at bat against him. You're not going to do that. 0 oh, 2 to Doherty. Base is empty, two out. That's foul. I think it's one of the reasons why they have. You know, a drop in, in offensive numbers. I mean, especially, you know, the way Tampa Bay has made the piggyback idea so good and, and have learned to make it so effective. 
I mean, you get maybe two at bats against a guy. Here comes another guy on the other side, throwing even, even better stuff. Lefty to righty, righty to lefty. So Kranz comes in, retires Oklahoma State in order in the second. Headed to the third in Stillwater. It's two nothing. Cowboys over the Shockers on ESPN Plus. Two key pieces coming into the year for Wichita State. You see the numbers down for Garrett Kosos and Jack Segrist, but the big reason for that injury, Segrist has been bothering with, has been troubled rather with a labrum injury that has resulted in his move from second base to first base or perhaps even DH. And Kosos, who last year had a big year with 12 home runs and 45 RBIs, missed more than four weeks with a hamstring injury. So two big pieces to their offense that have been limited this year and consequently their numbers down as Stewart leads off here in the Wichita State third and looks at strike one. So it gives you know a couple other guys an opportunity and that's all you can do and you try to develop your depth. You know and as we mentioned earlier Kosas a year ago 25 games into the year was hitting 330 with 10 home runs and 37 RBIs missed about a month with a wrist injury and of course coming back numbers not as strong as you might expect. Two balls and a strike to Stewart leading off here in the third. Well you saw what losing Dorshing did to Oklahoma State. Absolutely. You know, they lost him in the fourth game and then you have like 30 days of uh, you know where are we going to score at you know who's our go to guy. That's the second nice play by Reggio and out at first. Yeah, the Little Rock made a big league play right there. Then he got a hug from his shortstop. So back to the top of the order and Chuck Ingram, who struck out. By the way, Trevor Martin out there for a third inning of work, making his first career start, and it's 0-1. Well, the temptation is, I mean, as well as he's thrown, you keep using him, you're not going to have him on the weekend. And like we were just talking, the weekend's still the uh, the most important part of your schedule. So, and with West Virginia being in a one hole, you'd like to think that tonight, if Trevor gives you three, you might have him back on Sunday out of the bullpen. So, you know, be careful. You don't let, don't get too too hung up in the, in the zeros on the board. No one two to Ingram. Ooh. Just missed. It's one and two. You know, keep in mind as you ponder the weekend series at West Virginia, even though it's Easter weekend, it will be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday series. Some schools choose to go Thursday, Friday, Saturday on Easter weekend. Oklahoma State did that a year ago when West Virginia came to Stillwater, but it will be Friday, Saturday, and Easter Sunday in Morgantown. Yeah, and a 12 o'clock start. That I would think a church day. Long journey home for the Cowboys though after the game. And the second time that Ingram has struck out tonight and for Martin his fourth strikeout and there's two away here in the third. Yeah that 86 mile an hour slider right there that's not going to get hit. <laughs> I'm sorry but that one had depth and by you know and, and again it's out of the hitting zone. And by this time of the year Guys that have had a lot of at bats, they see that slider better, but we're playing at twilight, Dave. Best pitch to throw in twilight is a slider. It's fisted foul by Brock Rodden hitting with the bases empty and two out in the third. There you see the numbers on Rodden. Most of those numbers achieved in a stretch of consecutive weekend series in South Dakota State in New Mexico when he hit three home runs and drove in 13 over six games. And it's one and one. Well best time to get hot is from this point on. You have a good weekend you want to ride it. 
That ball's hit pretty good. Out to left field, Thompson back to the track, and it's gone. He did it right. He got it up in that wind, and that's where you want to hit it, right there. Seventh home run of the year for Brock Rodden. It's a two-to-one game. It's blowing right field corner straight across to the left field corner. And so the first home run allowed this season by Martin, of course, who has been the closer for basically the entire year, getting his first start tonight. First pitch in there to Casarella. And it's 0-2. Just keeping an eye on the velocity. That's 92. And last inning, he jacked it up to 96. I would probably say that's his biggest number of the year, huh? Base is empty and a 1 2 count with two away. Good. It's two and two. Solo homer by Brock Rotten has turned this into a one run game. That's popped up. Wind may keep that in play. It will. First base side, that could be trouble, and it drops. Mendham was well into foul ground. The wind pushed it back into fair territory. It blew it probably a good 25 feet. And that's a fluke single with two away for Casarella. Yeah, just short of the uh, triangle. There's a look. But that ball got way up. And mishandled by three guys. When Mendham having to also navigate the runner, making that even more complex. And here's Thornhill. And your catcher has to come down the line and cover the inside. You take the outside. Is that how it works? Yeah, I mean, that's a you got to surround that pop up in this ballpark. And don't worry, the Oklahoma State players know that because they practice that all the time. And that high pop up on the right side proves to be an adventure once again. One or no to Thornhill who lined out soft liner to second his first trip. Bows that away one and one. Then it hits and it died in the grass. It didn't even hit and bounce and spin. It just hit and died. So apparently they got a little bit of water on this infield today. One run on three hits for Wichita State. Home run here in the second inning by Brock Rodden with two away. Cowboys two runs on one hit. And that's because the first two hitters for Oklahoma State in the first. Reggio and Earhart were hit by pitch. It's a softly hit ground ball to short and an easy play for Marcus Brown and that retired scored in the first he led off the game it's hit on the arm pitch in there for a strike got that good left hand and angle Reggio pops that up into shallow center and a diving catch made at the last moment by Stewart. Boy, he stuck with it as the wind blew it. He nice play. dives backward and makes a grab for the first out. And again, he really had to fight the wind on that one. It completely turned him around right there. So now here's Zach Earhart, who was also hit by pitch and scored in the first. By the way, Favors on the mound for w Wichita State. Working inning and a third against the Cowboys last Tuesday in Wichita, gave up one unearned run on three hits. In that inning and a third, he struck out two and walked none. 
a four pitch guy. And again, I don't know how long he's going to be around, but I don't think you're going to have to worry about using all four of them. One and one to Earhart. his delivery gets into his drop step takes the hands above the head gets everything moving near hard fouls that away yep, favors you another Oklahoma native from Midwest City played at Seminole State junior you college you don't see many guys do delivery and I like it. He builds his momentum back in order to come forward. He builds a little deception in. And that's a walk to Earhart with one out here in the third. And again, Zach continues to show you why freshmen play more than other freshmen. He's got a he's got an eye. He'll take the walk. And it makes hitting a lot better when you're swinging at strikes. So now it's Jake Thompson who grounded out the third his first trip. There hards the Cowboys leading base dealer with 13 steals and 17 attempts. He's at first after the wall. And again, the way this is rolling around with the lefty righty lefty thing kind of takes Oklahoma State out of the running game right here. Folks have stolen 34 bases in 32 games. Last year they stole 28 over the entire season. Two one Oklahoma State one out. That misses to Thompson. It's one and oh. Two runs in the first for Oklahoma State, one run for Wichita State in the third. And a runner at first, Earhart, after a one out walk here in the bottom of inning number three. Maybe instead of running, Dave, you play a little hit and run? Sure. It's one and one to Thompson. One ball, one strike. Jake's a good contact guy. You don't have to cheat. You can stay a little bit closer to the bag. And once you see that front knee going forward, take off. Changing the look a little bit. Maybe setting him up for his balk move right Show. This is where you use your balk move right here. He didn't do it. He went to the slide step, a little bit quicker to the plate, kind of made that 85 look a little quicker on Jake. One and two to Jake Thompson. One out. Bottom of the third. Two one Oklahoma State. Runner at first. Zach Earhart after a walk. One two to Thompson. It's two and two. Thompson seven of his last 40 at the plate after. Hitting well over 400 for much of the month of March. And a hard 400. This isn't a punch and Judy guy. This this guy for a month carried this club offensively. Yes, he did. 
2 2 to Thompson. Yes, and it's 3 and 2. Three balls, two strikes, one out, runner at first. Runner going here? Well, you know, if it, if it wasn't such a friendly wind blowing and you got your right handed power guy coming, um, I, I would say no. I mean, I want Dorshing every time he comes up the. And there they go. There goes the runner from first, threw down to second, not in time. Thompson strikes out, but that's the 14th stolen base of the year for Earhart, and he's at second with two out. Yeah, he got a really good jump right there. Sometimes, Dave, you have to see a little bit of film on lefties to see if they have that late move to first base, and he showed two early moves and then a slide step, so give Earhart a lot of credit right there for going to school on him. How unusual it is for Jake to strike out. You know, it's interesting. He's been striking out more as of late, Tom, to be honest. He, including that strikeout tonight, he struck out nine times in the last four games, and he was so hard to strike out prior to this last two week stretch or so because in the first 28 games, he only struck out 16 times. It can happen. You can run into a spell where the bat starts to feel a little heavy. Um, you know, you normally kind of do that when the weather sets in and it's really hot. Guys will have a little adjustment period there. But, I mean, Jake's 22 years old, 23 years old. And more of a man, as they say. So, hey, when you're playing competition, really good people one after another. And as much info is out there. Uh, you better you better stick to your guns. Don't start chasing pitches because Jake's not going to get very many good pitches to hit. So time. So Earhart at second. You see him in your screen with two out. Here's Griffin Dorshing had an RBI ground out to plate the Cowboys' first run. One of two scored in the first. And Dorshing. Hits that deep to center field. Ingram back to the track and in front of the wall. Gage Williams. Trevor Martin worked three innings, gave up one run on three hits, allowed the home run to Brock Rodden. Walked one, struck out four. It's two and one to Williams, who's singled in the second. Now that's three fastballs, 92 to 94 all in the same third of home plate. So he can obviously repeat his pitches. That's fouled away. 2-1 Oklahoma State, top of the fourth. Gage Williams leading off the fourth for Wichita State. That's four in a row, the same, same exact spot. Now that's good. That's being able to repeat your, your pitch. As we saw on the weekend, boy, the ability to go in was so effective. It's five in a row, same spot. You either pitch into the scouting report, and you might you might have a guy here that you don't have a whole lot of respect for as far as hitting a fastball. And I got to believe after five in a row, he's got to be sitting dead red fastball and might be a good time to drop a breaking ball in there. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. And a called strike three as Davis strikes out Gage Williams to start the Wichita State fourth. That's a 94 with really good sink on it. Down in the strike zone. I think he might have been looking breaking ball too, the way he took that fastball. I mean, there wasn't any question about where it was, whether it was a ball or a strike. And Tolley rips that into center field. Now it'll be a one out single. Got in on him. He just got to barrel through just, just enough. Got his hands inside just enough to get it into center field. So totally at first with one out here in the top of the fourth. It's two to one Oklahoma State. Jordan Rogers, who flew out to center his first trip, will step in. Oh. 
And it's 0-1. 94. I think Kel came to school throwing 89-90, touching 91. Much more mature. It's in the dirt, blocked by Doherty. And normally after three years of college, Dave, you're, you're starting to mature enough to where the pro people can look at you and say, ah, it's good. He, he's gotten better every year. His velocity went up. It didn't go backwards. And some guys come in and they leave the same guy. The kills made that jump. There you see Tolley off of first. One out. One one pitch coming. And that's a wild pitch. And down to second goes Tolley, and he's there with one out. It yeah, counts two and we've one. We've seen that a lot. You know, it's a it's a funny thing. I think it's a location thing. I think they're they're literally trying to throw the ball down, trying to make people, you know, fish or swing out of the strike zone. But boy, the guy behind the dish has got to get that glove under it and block it. But it's when it's 94, you better cheat a little bit. You better get there. As catchers go, if you can't lift that right foot, you're not going out there to block that. That's that? in there at 78 mile an hour. It's two and two. Here's that curve ball right there. Now he can't sit just dead red. Now he's going to have to do a, an adjustment here. Break him down, make him hit the ball the other way. Come back in and jam him. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Chop foul, first base side. Two runs in the first for Oklahoma State, one in the third on a solo homer by Brock Rodden in the Shocker third. Wichita State has used three different pitchers in the game, and Cale Davis the second to work for Oklahoma State after Trevor Martin made his first career start. Gave up one run in three innings. It was the home run he gave up. And a swing and a miss, and Rogers strikes out, and there's two away. That's a great pitch right there. He asked for it in. He not only went in, Dave, he didn't go in soft. He went in there hard. A lot of young pitchers, when, they, when they're asked to go in arm side, they take something off of it. They try to run it instead of pound it. That's a high-quality pitch right there for Kel Davis. So two out for Sestro. One and one. Totally at second. He delivered a one out single. Kale Davis worked twice in the Bedlam series over the weekend. Worked on Sunday as well as on Friday. Yeah, when he came in, I kind of thought, well, maybe it'll be a three inning job for him, but that's a lot of work in a short period of time. And it's one and two. I think Kill Davis is one of those guys that needs a little bit more work, Dave. He's a big, strong guy, well conditioned. I mean, this is this is his draft year. I think he'll take every inning he can get his hands on. Out back. Yeah, 
And what you see on on Tuesday night when a guy goes on gives you 50 60 pitches you're not going to see that guy on Friday night. So you start banking on the fact that your ace on Friday or your Friday night guy is going to give you seven innings and you go bingo with him and then maybe you're maybe a setup guy or just straight to your closer and I think what you're seeing tonight Oklahoma State's going with some of their better arms. And it tells you the value of the ball game. And Davis wow. dropped. Boy, I've never looked in the portal, but it might be fun to look in there and see how many kids are in there. And there's a guy from James Madison at Wichita State. That's. Oh, you're seeing guys just unusual, isn't it? Sort of scurry about the country in all sports. In a way, that's good because you get a chance to see the country. In Jones case he is a graduate transfer which is a slight variation. Finished his undergraduate degree and is now at Wichita State one two to Mendham. It's two and two Mendham had an RBI double in the first. Well he's working out of the stretch so he's been in a bullpen probably for a long time. But he's been 88 to 92 so far and. Like I said just give me an inning. That's chopped to short. Third baseman Casarella throws to first and in time. Nicely done. One away. You put the script together and have a little meeting before the game. Say, here's what we're going to do, boys. And come the seventh, I'll take over and we'll we'll play it. We'll see whether we're up or down on the scoreboard. But let them know what they're doing. A lot of pitchers like that. They like to know when in the game they're going to be a factor. You try to tell them sometimes a guy gets on a roll and you can actually pit, pitch past the, the roll. You can pitch past the guy. And the hardest thing to do is to say, hey, he went five. So you guys that were ready for innings three and four, you're you're out of the picture tonight. You know, he gave us five, you're out. One and oh to Nolan McClain. It's two and oh. What's the potential backfire of rolling out one guy? Thing that, well, I mean, the next guy already knows, according to the script, that he's got the next inning. So you can get him ready before a real ugly inning sets sets in. But I don't know. I mean, when you do the spring training thing, it it seems to be comfortable. The back, you know, you just don't want anybody to go out there and. Literally, you don't want to. You don't want a guy to go out and throw one pitch and get hurt. You know that that's not good. Like if a guy had to leave after one hitter, and that can run you dry. That's a one-out walk to McLean. Or if the game stays tight, Dave, and you go in extra innings and you used all your guys. You know that can happen. I think that has a lot to do with why. Been a lot of consideration about that tenth inning thing. You know, put a runner at second. Doesn't seem like anybody wants to play extra inning baseball anymore, but you know that would be something that could enter into this. But we don't have that rule in college. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about that? Put a runner in second. Yeah. Only because I've listened to how major leaguers hate it. They hate to play extra innings because of what it does to to their body clock. Um, I like the idea of playing the tenth straight up. And I think somebody came up with an idea like in the 11th inning you'd put a runner at second. And then in the 12th inning you put a runner at third. Yeah I'll be honest I'm a purist I don't like it at all. You know me. Yeah. I don't like any of that yeah, stuff. I know and and. But I get what you're saying. When you blow your your bullpen up like that. Of course now they're letting you carry like 16 arms for the first month of the season. Due to the lockout so I don't you know I really don't know that it'll come into play. Um. But see to me all of that's part of the journey of a season and how you manage that and make it work. It's very difficult and it's hard on the players. No one likes that. Yeah. I don't mean to say that I don't appreciate the difficulty of trying to get through 162 games and then you know you're in mid August and it's 95 degrees and you go 17 innings in St. Louis. That's no fun for anybody. Yeah. And, but it and does change. It makes it a different game over the course of the yeah, season though. It's like playing a double header with no break and then the next day everybody's worn out and. 
But there again, I'm again, not, not trying to be a, you know, a, a turkey about this, so to speak. But that, to me, again, helps separate one team from the other. If you have good depth and a good roster, you can manage that 16 inning game. So that helps separate. Does that make sense? I've been to many extra inning games in the big leagues, and I it didn't make me want to leave. Brown hits that out to left. But the catch is made by Thornhill, and there's two away as McLean has after that 16 inning game. If you've got three or four guys on your bench that are, you know, basically, you know, one B type of starters, and suddenly that game becomes much more winnable for that team versus a team who maybe had injuries or just doesn't have the depth you know and, and it, it helps separate the quality from the not so good yeah and and right now they have enough pitching I mean rosters have expanded a little bit but I I, I listen to the position players side of it and I kind of get it you know nobody you go to the yard to play nine innings you end up playing 17 you're gonna go home tired and if the next day's a getaway, oh my goodness, you know, you're going to bed at two o'clock in the morning, getting up and having to yeah. play at one o'clock. I get it. Um, I don't know. I mean, last year they actually went to seven inning games and double headers. They did. I mean, that was like really weird. And they just had a they just had a lockout. So, you know, they obviously voted that stuff out. You know, might have been part of the the drag on time. Oh, and one to Aiden Miola. How often does it happen anyway? I mean, really. What's that? You know, the 14, 15, 16 inning games. I mean, you might get one, maybe two a year. Fouled away. Yeah, not a lot, really. I mean, although I'm careful to say this because I don't have any data in front of me. I would guess that perhaps they're a little bit more prevalent because you have so many electric arms out of the bullpen. You have so many guys striking out, right? Yeah. The small ball game, which to me becomes a big thing in extra innings, right? Yes. Isn't nearly as prevalent. So I would wager, and this is total speculation on my part. I have no facts to back this up. My guess would be there would be more extra inning games because of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, we'll keep an That's eye a guess. on it. I mean, we're a week into the season, you know, and. We'll see. I mean, the players had it, had their voice in it, and apparently they, they forfeited it because we're back to straight up baseball. I think the purists did a lot of complaining. ding a -lings like me, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you something. What, Go for what it. do you think the average age is to a baseball fan? The average age of a baseball fan right now? Oh, well, it's got to be probably you 60. Think the older and I think the uh, research backs that up. Miola fouls that away. It's still one and two. So here's some numbers just going to this extra inning route in 2019 under the traditional extra innings rules there were 208 extra inning games 44 percent of those games ended in the 10th inning almost half. Wow. That's unusual. You know, most people take their closer out after the ninth. Oh, of course. You bring him in, he pitches the ninth, and if you end up tied, they're out. They don't stick around. The swing and a miss. Nope. Well, darn good, too. Going oh, two. I know what I like. I like his rhythm. Boy, the body language of a pitcher, Dave, it, it, it tells you so much. I mean, this guy's coming after me, and he looks it. Not fooling around. As soon as that finger goes down, here he goes to the plate. They kind of make it look easy when they come from a position to the mound. 
They don't overthink the pitch selection. They just throw it. One out. Base is empty. Top of the fifth. And Ingram strikes out. 86 mile an hour slider. Third time that Ingram has struck out tonight in three appearances, two away. And the funny part is all three of those have been sliders that are unhittable. They're not just sliding, they've got depth. You know, there's six, eight inches on that finish to that slider. Now it's Brock Rodden who delivered Wichita State's only run with a two out solo homer in a third. First pitch in there for a strike. 95. And there's an attempt to the change up right there. You know, Yui's about a six footer. Gonna have to work hard to get downhill action on it. It's grounded just foul, first base side. Two out, base is empty. 2 1 Oklahoma State, top five. I guess the question would be do you throw the change up again and work on it, or you just try to put him away? Issue with the bat for Rodden. By the looks of the bullpen, I think Huey's going to pitch two innings tonight. Looks like Wichita State will put out. To the mound, a fifth pitcher in five innings here in the bottom half of this inning. It's grounded foul. Now, if that would have been a wooden bat, you'd had wood. The jam job. And Rodden strikes out. So Houston Morrill making his first appearance on the mound this year. Strikes out two and retires Wichita State in order in the fifth. Halfway home in Stillwater. It's 2-1 Oklahoma State on ESPN+. Plus. Two one Oklahoma State as we go to the bottom of the fifth there you see the American Conference standings the AAC Wichita State picked to finish fourth. Shockers lost two out of three on the road at East Carolina over the weekend. That's a tough place to play East Carolina. I've been there before that, that that's no picnic. They make you uncomfortable there. That's a good that's a good conference. Only eight teams. You only got what two guys under 500. I think the Big 12 is bringing in three of those guys. And another new pitcher, by the way, for Wichita State, the fifth to work in as many innings. It's left-hander Adam Kettleson. Well, we know who we're at from that league. So what does that league do to stay a league? I think you have to have six, don't you, to be recognized? I mean, you know, there's just all kinds of things in flux as far as conference realignment is concerned. None of that's over yet. So the likelihood is they'll add three from somewhere on that eastern half of the, the United States, I would think. Foul by Well, in fact, the American is adding some schools. They'll be adding Florida Atlantic, Charlotte, North Texas, UTSA, Rice. And UAB. Wow. So that's going to happen. It was announced in October. So and two to Doherty. Doherty struck out his first trip. Nine, one, and two hitters up. That's one and two. Well, you're still twilight. You're almost dark enough to where, you know, the lights might come into play here pretty soon, but boy. Tough time to hit right now, and then 
every time you go to the play, it's a different guy. And Ian just chased one up in his eyes, and that kid hadn't had a whole lot of at-bats. But when you're the second catcher, that's what happens. You get your start on Tuesday, and one of those big, sloppy breaking balls, you got away with it. So here's Rock Reggio. It's hit by pitch and scored in the first. That's chopped first base side and in rolling on the line is foul. First baseman Rogers waited for that to roll off the line. It's 0 and 1. Yeah, good decision. Not getting him anyway, so. Right. The minute it got on the other side of that chop line, he just booted it. Thirty seven on the year. That's four thirty two entering last weekend. No other Big 12 team was pinch hitting above three hundred. If Brown can deliver a base hit here, then cupcakes for all the guys that have pinch hit. If you can inherit a yeah. two two and deliver. This is the icing on the cake right here or on the cupcake as you referred. Payoff pitch. And that's great. Deep to left field. However, it'll stay in the park as the left fielder. Thornhill makes a grab and there's two away. That's a pretty good one swing uh, at bat right there. So base is empty two away. Here's Zach Earhart. Talking about long games Tom there's a little more to that. Tie for the second longest game 1984 White Sox beat the Brewers 7 6 in 25 innings and then on my birthday. And I remember listening to the first part of this game on the radio, my eighth birthday, September 11th, 1974. Cardinals beat the Mets in Shea, four to three. It scored all the way from first on a wild pickoff throw attempt by Hank Webb. McBride, the pride of Fulton, Missouri. So there you go. Wow. So who pitched the first 25 innings? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to find the if box If you score. can rattle that off, I'll buy you dinner. Well, seven hours and four minutes at Shea Stadium on my birthday. There's another Cowboy freshman getting. Yeah, what are we doing here? A ball to the body. It's one and two. You want to play nine quick ones tonight. Get it over with. Get it in the right column. Come out tomorrow, stretch, run a little bit, take a day off. Get on the airplane Thursday and. Get back in the league play. You'd like to have some of these guys uh, healthy enough to play, but I would think Rock's injury will take a day and a half of ice. No, I had to go down. That's in the dirts, two and two. Okay, you were asking about the pitching. That 1974 Cardinals Mets game, it went 25 innings. So here's something. Claude Osteen pitched nine and a third scoreless innings of relief for the Cardinals. Nine and a third scoreless innings of How relief. How long was he with the Cardinals? A I handful, remember him as a Dodger. A handful didn't... of years, I think, later in his career, right? Really? Would that be later in his career? I have to look that up. Talk That's... about a guy that could pitch. Rounded to short. Get another one in. Kansas and Kansas State, they're going to have to get really hot. And that's grounded just foul by Casarella down the third base side. Houston Moral out there for a second inning of relief work, his first pitching appearance of the season. Really hasn't played much the last week and a half or so. He's been kind of injury riddled this season. And you know, yeah, they come up with terms, and I know sometimes mom and dads don't like it, but Huey Moral's a baseball rat. He just loves baseball. I mean, this he pitched in 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 that travel ball stuff and doesn't mean you're a rat and I didn't I didn't make that term up I mean they called both my kids baseball rats probably because they were around the ballpark when the rats came out I don't know where, where does that come from <laughs> well it just means they're 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 doing it a lot yeah but you are hanging around I think you immoral if we just wanted to put on a show here you could pick a game and come out and play him at all nine positions I bet you 
a dollar to have done, he'd go behind the plate and catch, too. Sure he would. A swing and a miss, and that's Morrill's third strikeout. There's one out in the sixth. He could do the Jose Akendo. Yeah. I mean, guys have done that. I mean, just for the show. They normally do it later in the season when it's almost over and the game doesn't have any value. So that probably won't work. But if you made an announcement that next Tuesday night that Ewing Morrill was going to play nine positions, I guarantee you this ballpark would come out to see it. Let's chop foul, first base side. We should point out that Brent Brown has taken over at second base. It's the first time he's played second base in a game this season, to my knowledge. And things happen. That, you know, it kind of causes that. And now I'm almost sure the way they adjusted the rule this year that Yui could go from pitching this inning to the infield. And it's over. And right now, if everything holds true, there will be a ground ball to second. You know, you're talking about Houston Nor Morrill playing all nine positions. I don't believe Jose Akendo ever did that. You, know, you go way back. Bert Campaneris, Campy There's Campaneris, did it for the Kansas City Athletics in 1965. Cesar Tovar for the Minnesota Twins in 68. And a swing and a miss. And Houston Morrill has struck out four, and there's two away here in the sixth. For some reason, I think Dick Schofield did it. Could be wrong. Scott Sheldon has done it. Shane Holter has done it. And I believe Andrew Romine yeah, has also the, done that's it. That's the most recent, I think. Did it in 2017, if I remember right. Gage the Williams way, hitting the with the bases empty two out. Pitching here, he may just go the rest of the way. I mean, this, he's he's on fire. You kind of have the same feeling right now with Huey Morrow on the on the mound that you had Saturday night when McLean came to the mound. And Oklahoma State turns that that scoreboard around and, and wins that game late. Boy, mound presence, Dave. When you hang around the ballpark, you, you almost see a guy that really has no fear, and he loves doing what he's doing. And on three and zero, Gage Williams swings and fouls that off. It's three and one. You have to wonder if if the, the rookie catcher is, has even caught Huey Morrill, if he's ever even seen his stuff. Yeah, that's a good question. Very legitimate question. Yeah. Now I know that Huey and and, and McLean both they were both throwing bullpens in the fall just to just to see, you know, is it a possibility or in the case of an emergency and I think they had like twenty two arms in the fall. Bases empty, two out, 3-1 pitch. That's fouled again, 3-2. and two. Which seems to be the case all over the country. A lot of arms are going to school. And there was a day when you had, if you had an exceptional arm, they signed everybody. They signed every good arm. Payoff pitch. That's hit sharply to short to Marcus Brown. Making his first appearance on the mound for Oklahoma State. He's been terrific. Six up and six down for the right hander. 2 1 Oklahoma State, mid six. Bottom six, 2 1 Oklahoma State. Jake Thompson leading off for the Cowboys in the sixth. And he got off to a red hot start to begin the year, has cooled a bit. How much of that, of course, Thompson was an established player certainly coming into the year, but how much changes when you get off to such a great start in terms of how people pitch you and how much more difficult does it get once you get, say, a month in? Well, I mean, every you put an X on your back. I mean, and then he comes into the box and he wants to swing the bat and guy just moves it a little bit more out of the zone. And Jake's not a base dealer, so he wants to hit. Chases pitches and before you know it, you you lose that really good feeling. 
And you gotta expect Jake to try to have one of those sessions with his hitting coach and come out of it swinging and getting back in the groove. You really wanna be hitting 410 that last month of the season. Thompson leading off against six innings. And they got number seven warming up already, so. Be seven and seven. Yeah, you asked the question earlier, mate. You know, it's it's kind of interesting because now you're, you're staying to the script and all of a sudden you're in a 2-1 game. You might have thought like, well, if we just can just stay in it, well, you're in it. And uh, at what time do you get away from the script and go to your closer? And I mean, we're in the bottom of the sixth. Oklahoma State's playing another one-run game at home. And boy, they've done that a lot. Cowboys only have one hit. They benefited from the first two men being hit by pitch in the first. That two-run first inning was highlighted by both Reggio and Earhart being hit by pitch. RBI ground out and an RBI double by Mendham. And that's up the middle, and that's hit number two for Oklahoma State tonight. And a leadoff single for Jake Thompson here in the sixth. Now that's how you jumpstart. A guy like Jake Thompson just tell everybody how bad he's been for the last 10 games <laughs> and that's that's what you do right there so wherever that graphic came from you really helped jumpstart Jake and uh, I hope that's the start of another 400 run for him more importantly now you got to start playing for a run in the middle of the batting order right here where you, know, you expect the long ball and Still got the friendly wind blowing out the left center. Griffin Dorshing had the RBI ground out in the first. Swings and misses. Good slider. By the way, Derek Shaver, last appearance was over the weekend at East Carolina, worked a scoreless inning on so Saturday. We're, in, we're into the weekend, guys. I mean, this is not the midweek pitching staff. This is your weekend bullpen. So, hey, you're in it. Go win it. <laughs> One and one to Dorsham. And don't kid yourself, this is a tough game to play tonight for Oklahoma State. You just got done playing a three game series in conference with your in state rival. They were all three really good games. And they produced a lot of offense all weekend. And tonight you're just a little flat, maybe a little bit of out of gas. And then somebody says, oh, they're just kids. How can they be out of gas? Try playing baseball every day. Yeah. You can run out of gas. And, you know, the emotion is low. You're not, you know, you just beat this club last Tuesday and you're at home. Every trap is sitting right there. So you start to shake the bats in the dugout. You start walking the dugout. It is gone. Second home run of the year. A shot down the left field line for Griffin Dorshing and it's four to one Oklahoma State. I think that ball ended up in Oklahoma City. Wrong direction. Ponca City. Okay. <laughs> it ended up in another city. Yes. I, I, I lost it. I don't know. Did go over the scoreboard? Well it went left of the scoreboard and I think it went over the indoor hitting facility. Well it's a bunch of little kids trying to camera, find it. Here it is. It. He knew it was gone when he hit it but the only question about that, would it stay fair? And it did. Wow, I never even saw it. Yeah, it looks like down. it hit the, the very back of the indoor hitting facility and ricocheted either onto the AstroTurf infield practice field or ricocheted into the parking lot where someone may have a dent. Yeah, we There's the youngsters. Looks like that ball may be in the AstroTurf Hitting area or that's fielding say, area, I should say. Call, uh, call NASA. And Mendham hits that into left field. That's a single. Still no. One ball and one strike to Nolan McLean. I mean, just because uh, you got a three-run lead doesn't need doesn't mean you have to go back out there and give him two runs, making another one-run game. McLean chops that to third. Nice play by Casarella. Over to first and 
McLean is out. Down to second goes Mendham with one away. Yeah, he's really improved at third base. I, I had some people tell me in the fall that he looked like a really good hitter if he could just, you know, settle in at a position. But looks like he handles third base pretty well. So now Marcus Brown, who's 0 for 2. Mendham at second. It's 0 and 1. Trying to go through that hole on the left side. You got your shortstop playing, you know, really heavy towards the middle. David Mendham's not a stolen base guy, but if you're going to sit up there and worry about holding him, you're playing right into Marcus Brown because he can slap the ball the other way. And he'll take the base hit. So and two to Marcus Brown. You know, one of the reasons why Wichita State's been able to do this tonight, and that's have a mass staff night with pitchers working an inning apiece, is that Cameron By, who's become their Sunday starter, has been outstanding. He has a 0 0.24 ERA. Now, he's only been the Sunday starter for a handful of games and has just been extended Wow. To a significant number of innings in his last three starts and there's Marcus Brown shooting that down the left field line toward the corner and it's slicing foul <laughs> had the home run distance but is foul by his numbers East Carolina Sunday shut them out gave up no runs on three hits struck out eight walk three and that's at East Carolina yeah wow and buys given up one earned run in 37 innings. Now, that being said, he gave up. It's the Sunday guy. That's the Sunday guy. He started in the bullpen, Tom, because he was injured and then worked his way into the Sunday pitching role. He's been the American Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Week consecutive weeks, so he's been really good. And so Sunday, he mowed down eight innings in the series finale at East Carolina. 4-1 Oklahoma State here, one out, bottom six. Cowboys have scored two here in this inning on Griff Dorsing's long home run to left, and now the count two and two to Marcus Brown. You see Mendham, who's just left your screen, now back on your screen at second. Yeah, yeah. You know, you kind of think that Wichita State's right around the corner from getting that thing in the right direction. Well, they've shown signs. I mean, the... Frisco Classic beating Iowa, Washington State, Texas A&M consecutively, and that's shot into left or the center field rather, and that's a base hit. Men of around third headed toward the plate. He'll score easily. It's an RBI double for Marcus Brown and a 5-1 Oklahoma State lead here in the sixth. So what do you call that? Is that old school hitting? Uh, you got the runner over. You got the base hit to get him in. No, uh, no. Launch angle right there whatsoever. That's hard contact. Fine grass. Get me an RBI. I got a feeling that's why the coaches fell in love with him. That's why he's been in the lineup so much. Now you're liable to turn right around here and steal the base. One more run, you can start to breathe a little bit. Start to relax. So three runs for the Cowboys here in the sixth. Took a bit longer in Wichita last Tuesday. Shockers led 3-1 through seven. Then Oklahoma State scored three in the eighth and one in the ninth. Won the game Marcus Brown with that hit is now six out of his last 15 over his last four games. Two and O to Miola. You know, a nice midweek crowd at the ballpark. Goodness, over the weekend, almost 21,000 fans watched the three game Bedlam series. The atmosphere here was. Magnificent. Two and one to be I over. I believe three thousand tonight. I would say that. 
Right, so right, you right. can announce. I think you can announce 4,000 with nobody in the ballpark. I believe that's right. Oklahoma State, the top 10 nationally in attendance. Oh, once you come to this ballpark, you're hooked. You'll be back as quick as your schedule or your spouse will allow. And by design, the schedule is really, really good. Oh, it is. You know, when you first looked at it, you say, ah, it'll be a little soft spot here. And then you find out that club's better than you thought. And Three balls and a strike. And Miola is hit by pitch. It'll be first and second with one out. Been a rough go for Derek Shaver. He's given up three runs here and looks like his night is done. So we'll have a pitching change here. Three runs home in the inning for Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have runners at first and second with one away. And an opportunity to blow this game wide open. So Shaver's night is done. And we'll have the seventh shocker pitcher entering the game here. Yes, but it is a big deal. Big right hand bat middle of the lineup that they did not really have and yeah. when he was gone for a and, month with and, an injury. And you know, Dave, I mean, it'd be nice to start the season out and have everybody just do what you what you thought they were going to do, but you got to stay patient with certain guys. And when they lost him, I mean, it was like that, that you sunk. You know, we lost that four hole. And Doherty shoots that into right center, and that's a base hit. Stroh fields it, rounding third and heading toward the plate is Marcus Brown, and he is out at the plate. Nice throw. I mean, that's a one-hop skipper. The catcher caught it and tagged him. I mean, that was there was some gambling going on there, and that ball was hit pretty good. And Gage Williams making only his seventh start at catcher tonight hasn't played much. You watch him pick this thing up on that one hop, catch and tag, boom, tag. Yeah, nice play on both sides. So now first and third as Miola went to third. Here's Brett Brown, who entered the game as a pinch hitter when Reggio was unable to continue. Reggio was hit by pitch to start the game and had to leave with a two ball two strike count on him and Brown after taking ball three nearly hit the ball out to left field coming cold off the bench. I remember the last time we had a guy thrown out at the plate been a long time. Yeah, it has been a while. It's one and one to Brett Brown. That's a pretty good slider. Well you'd like to get that sixth run Dave. Yeah. Get away from the Grand Slam. Another good slider. Houston Morrill has worked the last two innings. The two way player for Oklahoma State on the mound has retired all six hitters that he's faced. First series. Worked three scoreless innings. Yeah, he looked like the guy. I mean, that was exactly what the doctor ordered. But it's been a little bumpy for the most part since. That's chopped to first. Mendham over to Mars. Did he get there in time? He apparently did not. Totally is safe at first. Wow, I think we'll look at that one again back and get this guy out. And Marsh, in fact, gave up two unearned runs against Oklahoma. There may be the double play ball. Out at second, throw to first, out at first, a double play. And that's how you train your mind. If you stand out there and you dwell on, on a pity party, you know, like, oh no, you know, I never get a right bounce, I never get the right bounce, you know, why didn't he catch that, you know, whatever. If that you go down that road, you never get one of these tailor made double play balls. Nice job by Brett Brown turning it at second base, playing second for the first time this year. Yeah. So the Browns team up. What can Browns do for you? They can turn two. Two away, base is empty here in the seventh. Don't talk about the Browns to me, all right? <laughs> 
with all the football talk right now, the Cleveland Browns are not my favorite oh. team. I wasn't even thinking about that. 0 and 2 to Stroh. No, I like this, the two Brown boys playing, but I don't like the Cleveland Browns. Duly noted. Well noted. To the Pittsburgh Steeler fan to my left. See, that ball's just running a little bit too much. And Dylan has to understand that. Make an adjustment. Slide over on the rubber a little bit. You know, get on top of that left-hand hitter a bit. Don't waste so many pitches out of the zone. See, that's another one. That ball has good life and good movement, but he's missing. And almost looks to me like he's working on the wrong side of the rubber. If you're going to be a specialist, you want to be right on top of this left-hand hitter. That's a strikeout, and Marsh, after an infield single, gets out of the seventh unscathed. Yeah, good job. Stretch time at Oklahoma State's O'Brien Stadium. It's 5-1 to one Cowboys over Wichita State on ESPN+. Plus. Five to one Oklahoma State as we go to the bottom of the seventh in Stillwater and as is always the case this time of year the schedule is challenging for just about any Big 12 conference member but boy that series against Southeast Missouri State looks innocent it's not Southeast Missouri is number 45 in the RPI this is quite a stretch you know if you don't have a season ticket you still can get in this ballpark you know we haven't had anybody walk away saying darn it I can't get in so over the next five weeks when we're at home you might want to come on out it's going to be a heck of a run right down the stretch Zach Earhart has been hit by pitch and walked grounded out that's over one fishing and Stevens throws ball two it's two and oh I think Zach's faced four different guys hadn't he this at bat number four I think that's right well, that's a weird night. Wichita State has used seven different pitchers, and Stevens gets the honor of being the only pitcher to go out there in consecutive innings. He retired last two Cowboy hitters to end Oklahoma State's sixth inning, and a sixth inning in which the Cowboys scored three to take this four run lead. 3 0. 3 and 1. And I'm sure Mike has a pitch count working on him based on his role on the weekend. And the good thing about playing on Tuesday, you get Wednesday and Thursday off. And most pitchers can recover, relief pitchers on two day rest. And that's a leadoff walk. I don't I don't think it's going to be much more than maybe 20 25 pitches for this guy and you know, we'll see number what number eight tonight. Yes. Right hander Creighton Hansen in the bullpen for Wichita State. Thompson with a never to the mound. And Stevens over to first, down to second is Earhart, and there's one away. I was just going to say another oddity. Every time you're thinking short game, you know, you'd like to get that that fifth run in. You want to bunt. It's been the middle of the order coming to the plate. And so what does Jake Thompson do? He just dribbles one, and same thing as a, as a sacrifice bunt. He got him to second. You know, one out and the guy that um, pretty soon are going to start calling him King Kong or call him what you want. Just be careful and make sure he knows you like him. <laughs> Monster two run homer for Dorshing now at the plate in the sixth inning, the last inning. I know one thing if the dugout's ever empty, I'm going to I'm going behind this guy. Oh, there's no doubt. Fouled away by Dorshing. So Earhart walked and then Thompson grounded out, moving Earhart to second. Now four times in the seven innings, Oklahoma State has put the leadoff man on, continuing a good trend. 
Yeah. I think the that. Cowboys had it 26 innings against Oklahoma, if my memory serves me correctly. Cowboys had the leadoff man on 12 times. That is correct. 12 26. That's good. That's good offensive baseball to get that leadoff guy on. Between that and two out, two out base hits, Dave, that, that's when you know you got a chance to be special. And nobody ever turns down the long ball. You just don't want to live and die on the home run. Uh oh. Got a Hunziker. Yes, we do. And over to third is Earhart with one out. That one hit the net, though. Maybe it doesn't that qualify. That doesn't count. It, it has to hit qualify. the brick wall. I'm so I'm just so honored that you would name that after me. The balls that ricochet off the brick backstop. That, that that's touching. You, I just you want you to know be, that. And, and you deserve it. Oh, you're it's so thoughtful. Infield is up. I mean, you're in the Hall of Fame. You have all kinds of things named after you. That's in fact, now I'll point out I saw this the other day. Ball field, southwest part of Stillwater. I believe it would be Couch Park, if I remember correctly. Named Holiday Family Field, the big the big field there. Oh, yeah, the Little League Complex. Yeah, at uh, 12th and Western here in Stillwater. Infield up, endorsing strikes out. Two away and a runner at third. Well, that's where Josh and Matt kind of grew up playing over there. And the famous story that I've told, but my wife gets mad every time I tell it. But no, don't tell it again. She no, told you to quit, well, right? That's right. We'll leave it alone. <laughs> it's one of the few times my memory is better than hers. I get it. Here's Mendham. He's two for three tonight. He's been on a great run. Now 24 out of his last 66. Ninety four. Wow. Pretty good heater. I don't think David wants that thing to get a, a bone or any part of his body right now. That's hit to third off the third baseman Casarella. Mendham is safe at first. Earhart scores and it's six to one Oklahoma State. That's amazing. That's twice tonight. He's done that. Hits the ball that hard the other way, which you don't ever expect it when it's when it's from coming from a lefty, but it's twice he's nailed him. And that scored an error. An error on Casarella. That official score down there on the field, give me a fungo bat. I wanna <laughs> But you can't I'm do inter that. Introduce him to what a about 105 off the bat looks like. But that was hit. But that was hit to his club, though, right? No, that ball's hard to handle. You're at home. Oh, so now, now we're at the Absolutely. bottom. Absolutely. Now we're at the bottom of the story. That's right. It's not an RBI for Mendham, so it's uh, Ooh, that makes tough it break even, for him. That makes it even tougher to uh -oh. swallow. Do I need to get under the table? Or are you going to go on a no? On you a, and on I we tirade. No, we didn't have anything to do with that well, scoring. Well, I know, but you you seem. That dug out down lift. here. I guarantee you the hitting coaches right now have one hand on the phone and the other hand on. No, don't do it. I'm, I'm not. Do it. I'm not stepping in the middle of that. It's the way it used to be. You know that. Oh, I know. I used to wait for you got until you got a call from the dugout. Yeah. The thing is, I would say this: if it's hit, if it's not hit right at him, I don't think there's any doubt. But that maybe that's. I'm sure that's what the official score was thinking. But it, look it's at right the, at him. the angle, Dave. Oh, I Anyway, that ball was alive when it got to that third baseman. Oh, and two to Nola McClain. 6 1 Oklahoma State, bottom seven. Cowboys have separated with three runs in the sixth and one in the seventh. This guy on the mound right here looks a little bit like Mike Pelfrey. And McClain strikes out, but the Cowboys had another. A solo run for the Pokes in the bullpen since the season started. Nine one and two hitters due up for Wichita State, and the first pitch is in there. 92, a little bit of cut on it. To Andrew Stewart. Cowboys have only walked one Wichita State hitter, so that's been a good thing. Walks had gone up just a bit for Cowboy pitchers recently, and that's lined down the left field line. That's headed for the corner for extra bases. 
Stewart around first, and he's motoring into second with a leadoff double here in the eighth. Now again, it's 0-1, and you you know you're sitting there going, "What's going on here?" Well, he threw this slider right down the middle. In fact, it had a hump in it, you know, almost looked like a bad curveball. And base at the left, he punished him for it. What you got to do, Baden, is you need to watch the film. Pay attention to where you're missing when you miss down the middle. Now the leading hitter, Chuck Ingram, who's struck out three times hits, and Another he lines one. that into right, but right at the right fielder, McLean, he makes a grab. He's Stewart out. tags, heads to third, and the Ooh, tag is not geez. in time. What a throw. That's a good piece of hitting right there. He just hit it right at him in right field. So one out, now Stewart at third. McLean with a tremendous throw from right, almost threw him out. That's fun to watch. That's big league right there. Even going backwards. Throw just a bit down the line. But you can't fault McLean, of course. Saturday night, the final pitch that he threw in striking out Oklahoma, setting up the walk-off win for the Cowboys. That final pitch at McLean, who's playing right field now, threw was at 99 miles an hour. Now it's Brock Rodden who hit a solo homer for Wichita State's only run. He's heading to count 2-0 and with Stewart at third and one out. A 6-1 Oklahoma State lead here in the eighth. I don't care if it is 6-1. Try to punch this guy out or pop him up on the infield. That's fouled. Ricocheting off the club level and down toward the dugout. You know, some people say don't throw a changeup with one out and a runner at third. I've heard that maybe nine million times. But again, for a guy that's trying to refine himself right here, show that third pitch. It's three and one. Almost looks like he's going to try to set up a double play situation. That works too. Walks do nothing but get you in trouble. Good pitch. And the count is full. Now right now, the only thing in your mind is what's my best pitch to strike him out right here? And you got to throw it. You got to throw with conviction. Got to believe in it and get after him. And he struck him out. Wow. That is a great pitch. And that pitch was thrown with a little bit of anger in it. Now go to the backside, relax a little bit, come back and get the third out. So two outs and Stewart at third. Now it's Xavier Casarella. Looks at ball one. It's just been such a rough go for Wichita State offensively. Including tonight, Shockers have scored more than five runs only once. And if you again include tonight's game, just five runs once in their last 12. And they trail here six to one, top of the eighth. And a one-one count to Casarella. Tell you what, the, the arms at Oklahoma State's run out there tonight. Uh, they're capable of pitching a one-run ball game. That's fouled away right side, and it's one and two. Now finish the breaking ball like the one you threw for the strikeout. If I was baiting, I would quit throwing that get me over slider. I don't like that. Put him away right here. Runner at third, two out, the one two. It's in the dirt, but blocked by Doherty. It stays in nice front job. of him. It's two nice and two. Nice job by the rookie catcher right there. And that's where that ball. A lot of balls this year. You know that. And it, it kind of eliminates that slider in the dirt. You throw it again right here, you strike him out. 
Stewart at third, two out. 2-2 two -two pitch. Root to Casarella. Called strike three. Brown now six of his last 15 over the last four games. And he grounds that to first. And Rogers makes a play and there's one out. So here's Aiden Miola will be coming to the plate looking for his first hit of the night. Miola making the start at third base once again. Grounds that foul toward the dugout. Wichita State has a home comfort series Thursday, Friday, Saturday for Easter weekend against the Cincinnati Bearcats. Well, now, now you know why the relievers have only gotten one inning apiece. Short recovery. Well, they have kind of a peculiar schedule. Thursday, Friday, Saturday against Cincinnati, and then home for Kansas State Monday and at Oklahoma Tuesday of next week. Wow. And then back to the normal routine Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 22nd, 23rd, 24th with a home series against Central Florida. That's a little unusual. Well, now you know why they're using all their arms. That's hit deep to right field by Miola. Back to the track. Wall gone. Now he got a, I think it hit the railing. Oh, did it hit the railing? Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought the ball was out. I think I think it hit that railing over the wall. I thought it That's hit actually. I thought it hit the brick bleachers and bounced back in. Yeah, that that ball ricocheted off something. Yeah, that came off the bleachers. He crushed that. Oh, you can't get this wrong. You get a home run. You got to get a home run. Well, here's a look. This will tell us. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I should have watched it closer on the monitor, but he hit it so hard. I thought there was no doubt. What did that hit? Oh boy, that didn't help. Well, perhaps I was wrong. Boy, I thought for sure that was out, but maybe the wind held it up after all. Well, you hear something, it hit something. See, I think it, it, hit, the it, hit, the, it hit the fence. I think it hit the railing right there and ricocheted over. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's hard to tell. I would just ask those two kids sitting right there to try to catch it. Those as, kids wouldn't tell a lie. Because I didn't think there was any doubt that it was out, but apparently they're going to say it's a triple. Boy, I beg your pardon. I, I thought that ball was gone. Apparently not. I got totally fooled on that. I got to believe if, if it was a one-run ball game, they would still be looking. Yeah, I think you're right. So it's a triple. And Doherty fouls that away, so it's a triple. Yeah, you may be right. That may have hit the rail. The well, angles were not were not such that you could see for sure what it hit. Yeah, those two boys were going to catch it, and then they pulled off of it. You know. And oh, that's true. I didn't even see the reactions. You're right. They did, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, I, I, oh, well. I mean, it's hey, let's paint those white walls back there too. We would have been able to yeah. see it a lot better. But who'd ever thought that would come into play? So Miola at third with one out. Doherty fouls that away. It's one and two. Just nothing like getting cheated a home run. That's the wrong thing to get cheated. And I don't mean cheated. Yeah, cheated. I'll I mean, just like be robbed, honest. Robbed, all right? We, we did, get robbed of a home run. Did you? And the infield's up, by the way, for Wichita State. I thought when the ball was hit, there was no doubt. I mean, did you feel that way? Yeah, I, I thought did, it was I thought hammered. It was gone. 
Now look at the flag though. It's blowing straight down now. It's like knocking everything down. Yeah, it's uh, welcome to Oklahoma in the spring, man. Now we get a base hit right here. We'll get that, that insurance run that we're looking for every time you come to the plate. Two and two. Yeah, I'd love to be able to out. Uh, you're right. We should ask those kids out there. Get their phone number. They'd be the only ones that probably know for sure. And a call strike three and there's two out. I think Ian got fold right there. I think he was looking hard and he threw him a change up. Ian's caught a nice game tonight. That, that's good. You give your give your frontline catcher a night off. Feel good about it. Catches a one run game. Ian had a hit tonight. That's a pretty good night for the rook. Two and zero to Brett Brown. Yeah, don't kid yourself. Six to one in the bottom of the eighth. They're looking for strikes. And we're creeping up on a three-hour game. Uh -oh. And Brett Brown hammers that deep to left field. No doubt about that one. That's gone. Yeah, that went over Alumni Alley. That's uh, that's another 400 footer. Yeah, he sold that one as soon as it hit the bat. So Brett Brown, his second home run of the year and first since February 27th. It's 8-1 Cowboys. That slider was right over the middle of the plate, and boy, he made him pay for it. So here's Zach Earhart, two runs home in the inning. It's 8 1. Just a very patient offensive ball club right now, Oklahoma State. One here, two there, three here. That's ripped to short for Stewart. Wow. And the Cowboys are retired. But Oklahoma State scores two on Brett Brown's two-run homer. It's your games where we said this is going to be a challenge. I think they had, what, 17 and 24 days? Yeah, that was, yeah. 20 and 27 days, something like that. Three and one. Ninety four. Thornhill trying to keep that streak alive, and he will. With a leadoff walk here in the ninth. Only the second walk issued by Cowboy pitching tonight. And and again, okay, ninety three to ninety five. Great arm. If you're going to be a, a successful relief pitcher, it's based on being able to get the first guy out. You know, that's that's the first major thing you've got to accomplish. And to walk the leadoff guy, even at eight to one, what Ryan has to understand is come out here and pitch just like you're in a like a, a pattern: fastball, breaking ball, fastball, changeup. Instead of coming out and just blowing a radar gun up and look up, you got a guy on and and you got somebody else warming up, which that gets away from Doherty and down to second goes Thornhill. He's there with nobody out. And instead of having a, just a good one out one inning 
outing where you feel good about it. You know, you got a guy in scoring position with nobody out and settle down, settle down. Guys look like they go to the same barber shop. Yeah, and now the body language is not good. There's nothing free and easy coming out of Eamon. Go to your second pitch. Find something else you might have a little com command of. By the way, Caden Trinkle has entered the game in center field. Earhart slides over to right. First pitch in there, 95 miles an hour, and totally swings and misses. Eight one, top nine. Two on, nobody out. That's a little never, and it's foul. So and two. 97 miles an hour. Well, they had a funny sound. Almost sounded like he got the catcher's glove. I wondered that too. Yeah. Well, nobody else did, so it's just you and I. I don't think this guy has the bat speed to handle Nolan McLean. You better get started and cheat a little bit. Oh, two. Tolly's had a good night. Two for three. Up at batting average at 291. He has two of Wichita State's six hits. Thornhill at second, Williams at first. Both were walked by year to start the ninth. Only the second and third walks issued by Cowboy pitchers tonight. Seven mile an hour slider up on your hands. I mean, it's pretty hard to do anything with that pitch. You can learn how to hit that ball right there over the third base dugout. Not a real easy task. Now it's Jordan Rogers. First and second, one out. Top of the ninth. 97 miles per hour, strike one. It's almost like he can smell it. You know, he, you know, he's got that. He's got that air about him. He's, he has a true closer image. That's grounded into left field. And that's a base hit. Thornpill will head to third. It'll be bases loaded, one out here in the ninth. It's a good idea with the bat. He didn't overswing it. He just tried to make contact, and it found a hole and. So now it's Sestro who's struck out twice. And he's flown out to center. Base is loaded. One out. Top of the ninth. 8 1 Oklahoma State. I almost like to see how many. Fastballs tonight, Oklahoma State has thrown that were under 90. Not many. I'm not sure. Oh, and two. Maybe Marsh it was 88, 89.
0-2. That's ripped into left center, back to the track, into the wall. It's gone. That's a grand slam home run for Sestro, and it's an 8-5 to five game. Well, that kind of shows you what happens when you make contact with a 97-mile-an-hour fastball, and believe me, that left-hand hitter was late, and he got it up in the wind, and he got it out of here, and... Now you pitch a little bit. Quit trying to just. So the third home of the home run of the year for Stro, and it's an 8-5 game. First pitch misses to Stewart. Things getting a little interesting here. But now the base is empty. Still a three-run lead. Four runs home on the Grand Slam, obviously. That's hit out to right. Earhart started back, then comes in and makes a play, and there's two out. center field and that's a base hit and it's into the alley for extra bases. Ingram around second he'll stop there with a two out stand up double. Now the tying run is on deck. And it'll be the Oklahoma native Rodden who's already homer tonight. Hitting with two out and a runner at second. Well, we're back to a three run def you know, it's like every game three two or one. That's your That's your magic number. It was 8 1 Oklahoma State coming into the top of the ninth. Grand slam home run by Stroh has made things interesting. First pitch in there for a strike. Casarella on deck and should Rodden get on here with two out. He would be the tying run. 8-5 Oklahoma State, runner at second, two out. 0-1 pitch coming, McLean to Rodden. 8-5 Oklahoma State. Two out in the ninth and the 0-2. 